How many lovers have you made today? Chapter 1, Part 2 Twilight notices how tense Anon has become. She's not surprised. He doesn't know what to say to her. Not like she'd have the answers if the tables were reversed. So she decides to talk about one of the main reasons she wanted to speak with him. Something that's been grating on her mind for a while. Anon, there's one last thing I'd like to talk to you about. She takes a moment to gather her thoughts as she tries her best to look him in the eyes. But every so often, she has to avert her gaze before unsteadily returning it. I... I'd like for you to help me with something. This is becoming too much for Anon. This has got to be the longest he's ever spent near Twilight, and it's taking its toll. He can feel the sickness rising, but he'll persevere, if only out of curiosity. You want my help? She nods. It took me some time to realize it, but you're not the only one I've hurt. I want to make amends with those I've wronged. Hmm. This is somewhat interesting for Anon to hear. He thinks back on Gilda and her story about how Rainbow Dash turned her back on her. It's not surprising to hear that Twilight has hurt others, but still. Why would she need his help? Why are you asking me, of all people, to help you? Alright, Twilight feels as if she's making some headway right now. Anon is at least willing to hear her out. She was sure he'd just ignore her or even walk away. Well, the first pony I'd like to speak with is Trixie. You know Trixie? He sits up slightly, lifting an eyebrow. No! Well, uh, yes, it's complicated. Twilight dejectedly paws at the ground. Do you want to hear the story? As much as he doesn't want to be here, he can't deny that she has his interest. So for now, he'll stomach his revulsion and hear what she has to say. I'm listening. Celestia and Luna are in the royal bathhouse as they bathe, both deep in thought. Since they woke up, they'd been thinking over various ideas for approaching Anon. Not many have struck, and as time goes on, these and ideas have become few and far between. Is there just no option? Celestia finally cries, exceptionally frustrated. Just ask him? Luna offers. I can't just ask him, Luna. Uh, perhaps we are complicating things too much. Why not just be up front? Celestia rolls her eyes. Anon may be understanding, but you know he's easily spooked by new things. Especially when they are so brazenly thrown in his face. No, oh, this must be broached delicately. Luna can't really argue with that, as she has no idea how Anon will react to this situation. I suppose you're right. She rests her head upon her hooves. So then, dear sister, how should we go about this? Why not just spend time with him as you normally would, but in various romantic settings? A new voice suggests. Well, that's better than... Celestia looks over to her right to see Cadence in the bath with them. Cadence? Celestia blinks a couple of times. When did you get here? Cadence chuckles at that. I've been here for a while. You two were so absorbed in your plans for courting Anon that you didn't even notice me enter. How much have you heard? Luna asks, disturbed that she allowed herself to be so easily caught off guard. Oh, just that you want to woo Anon. Cadence flashes Celestia a winning smile. I've known how you felt since the party. I'm glad to hear that you're finally going after him. A blush explodes across Celestia's face. You knew the entire time? Cadence's smile widens. I have to say, your raw love energy for him is rather... amazing. Have you always felt this way about him? This is just odd for Celestia. Not only because this is her niece, but because she's never really talked much about love until just recently with her sister. This is all still new for her, and she admits that despite all her years, she's slightly blind to the whole concept. I believe so. I have always cared for Anon, but recently it's grown to be something... different. A feeling more intimate. It's thanks to Luna that I've become more aware of what it is I feel. Cadence looks over to Luna. She appears to be somewhat ill, at ease, 
as if she doesn't like Cadence being here. She's probably embarrassed. Oh, so you were the first to discover how you felt. Luna tenses. Yes, my captain made it clear that what I was experiencing was the feeling of love. Is it the first time you two have felt this way about anything? The two sisters nod. While they've both been close to others, their hearts never fluttered then the way they do now when they're around and on. However, as Luna starts to think about this entire situation, she finds herself questioning something. Cadence? Yes? Cadence turns her attention to Luna. You know we both love Anon. Cadence furrows her brows, pondering where Luna meant to go with this question. Of course. Again, the love energy from you two is so potent. It's almost painful to be around. So you understand we intend to make a herd with them? I'm no prude, auntie. Cadence responds with a chuckle. I'm all for you both sharing your love with one creature. Love is... complicated, and I'd never condemn you for wanting to be happy. It makes sense, considering the circumstances. Luna remembers what Anon told her about Cadence. She's still somewhat upset by that, but she can't deny that Cadence has nothing but the purest intent in mind. Considering she's young and in love with her own partner, perhaps she could prove useful. Why? Celestia chimes in. I don't mean to sound ungrateful, but don't you have other business to worry about? I'm done with my training for the most part. Cadence then feels her smile fade a bit. I'll be honest, I feel a bit guilty about some of the things I said to Anon during this party. This is news to Celestia. What did you tell them? Cadence's eyes sorrowfully fall to the surface of the water. I told him that Twilight was in shambles and he should forgive her. I was insensitive to him and his plight, all because of what I wanted for Twilight. Cadence drags her gaze back up to Celestia. I'm sorry for not having listened to you, Auntie. I, I should have kept my muzzle out of it. Cadence hangs her head low, but is surprised when she feels her aunt wrap her wings around her and pull her to her chest. It's alright, Cadence. Celestia whispers. I know, it must have been hard to see Twilight in so much pain. Cadence's eyes water as she remembers that night Twilight and her talked in the park. However, things are better now, are they not? They are. Cadence nods. Celestia leans back and brushes away Cadence's tears with a wing. Oh, come now. There's no need for tears. She smiles warmly at her niece. Cadence returned the smile with cheer. So, you wish to help us cordon on? Cadence brings a hoof to her aunts. If you would allow me. Celestia looks over to her sister. Luna? Luna just sighs as she shakes her head. Fine. I guess we could use the help. That mood in the room lightens immediately as Cadence takes a second to compose herself. Very well. So, where do we begin? Celestia asks. How about you tell me more about Anon? Cadence confidently replies. That was an interesting story for Anon to hear. Well, uh, interesting isn't the word he'd use. Upsetting is a pretty good word to describe what Twilight told him. Trixie is a lovely mare, and hearing about how mistreated she was in Ponyville angers him. Sure, she's eccentric and egotistical, but that's what a magician is supposed to be. The fact that she was blamed for what two stupid kids did is absurd. Not to mention that her home was destroyed, and no one so much as blinked. I know, it's horrible. Twilight says, attempting to calm Anon. This is why I have to talk to her. I've done so much wrong, and now I want to make things right. As much as Anon hates this, he can't speak for Trixie. It's her decision whether she wants to see Twilight or not. Might as well take a page from Blossom's book. <sighs> I don't know where she lives, but I do know she visits my shop often. You'll meet her there sooner or later. Anon proposes. Well, that should be that, but Anon notices that Twilight's still sitting here. Not only that, but that hesitant expression has reappeared as she rubs one forehoof over the other. 
This can't be a good sign. I... um... I, I was wondering if you would come with me? As a favor? She asks. That was the very last thing Anon was expecting to hear from her. It's one thing to be this close to her for as long as he has, but now she wants him to accompany her on this quest of amends? What could she possibly be thinking? <sighs> Why? He asks, voice low and drawn out. Twilight gets why he's hesitant. The last thing he wants to do is be alone with her, after what she did in Ponyville. But she has a good reason for why she wants him there. Twilight rubs a foreleg against the other, her gaze resting squarely on the ground. I don't want to do this alone. I know you hate me, but... But that's why I need you. Even if it hurts me, you tell me what I'm doing wrong. She looks to the grass as she digs her hoof into the dirt. It hasn't been easy since you helped me. Not even before then. Everyone trots carefully around me, treating me as though I'll break if they say one negative thing. She peers into Anand's eyes. That's not what I need right now. I want to become better. I have to become better. Even if it hurts. Twilight wants him to help because he's capable of hurting her. It makes sense to some degree, but Anon isn't too sure about this. If he agrees, he'll be alone with Twilight. If he denies her, then who knows what could happen. She could become worse. Or perhaps it won't matter either way. Then there's Trixie. Does Anon really want to leave her alone with Twilight? Anon runs a hand through his hair, unaware of the sweat breaking from his skin. Damn it. He doesn't want what he suffered to happen to anyone else. Even if there's only a slim chance of something happening again, there was a chance all that was the reason to be wary. He doesn't like this, but it's something he must do. Then again, it never hurts to have a little insurance. As long as Blossom's with me. Anon concludes, his tone brooking no arguments. Blossom? Twilight tilts her head slightly in confusion. Blossom falls from the tree Anon was leaning against and lands beside him. Twilight jumps back in fright as she didn't expect another pony to be there. Wait a second. As Twilight eyes this pony, she instantly recognizes her. It's the Thestral she ran into once. Captain Blossom. Twilight whispers. You knew I was here? Blossom asks Anon, ignoring Twilight. I always know when you're around. Anon then reaches over and flicks her nose. Oh, so stop coming into the royal bathhouse. It creeps me out knowing you're there watching me. When the sisters aren't there, I have to protect you. Especially when you're at your most vulnerable. She asserts with a smirk. At least take a bath with me. It's a lot less awkward. Anon then turns to Twilight. This is Blossom. She's my personal guard. Twilight's eyes rapidly flick between the two. How long have you been there? The, the entire, entire time. time. Both Blossom and Anon answer. Oh. I'll only entertain your favor if Blossom can come. Anon declares, deciding to get back on track. Twilight fully understands why Anon would do this, yet she can't fight the embarrassment from having another pony hear what she plans to do. I... I'm, I'm alright with her coming. Anon glances at Blossom. You good? Blossom shrugs. I just follow you. If you want to help her, then that's your business. Anon leans against the tree again and closes his eyes for a moment. I'd like some time to reflect on this. Even with Blossom on the table, this is rather out of the blue for me. I understand. I have a few other things I'd like to take care of before leaving the castle anyway. Twilight stands up. Send me a message if you accept. We can talk about what to do after that. Without another word, Twilight leaves Anon alone with Blossom. The guard watches Twilight leave and makes sure she's gone before turning her attention to Anon. He kinda take her up on that favor? I don't know, Blossom. This for the sisters? She guesses. A little, but... You heard Twilight's story. There are others out there. And I don't like the idea of leaving them alone with Twilight. Blossom feels a large smile grow on her face. She crouches down low and suddenly pounces onto Anon's face hugging the panicking human and burying his face in her stomach. Oh, you! 
Blossom, get off me! A muffled voice shouts past her fur. Anon is attempting to peel the furry nuisance from his face. You're so cute when you care about others! Anon tries to get Blossom off his face, but she's really strong. He just falls onto his back in defeat, lying on the grass. He's disgusted by even the idea of being with Twilight for an extended period of time, but knowing Blossom will be there calms him. Man, he needs to consider whether or not this is worth doing. Then again, does he have a choice? Man, still can't believe the last time I read this, it was so long ago. Anywho, let's get on to our refined donators. Top donators are 630, Badass Waffle, Only One Thing, Saru Orion, Iron Sky, and Jesse Smith. Match Effect 109, Dark Side, Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moon, Heart, Pastel Skies, Austin Rollins, Stu Hex, Sword Brother, Mortar, Domi, Con Library, Rinse Life, Nine, Will, Chris, Twinkie, Rise, Hall, Shadow Moon, Luigi, 88, Chancellor, Crest, Pixie, 369, Bobcat, GGF, Murder Princess, and many more awesome people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.